Good day, good people. This is the Holler the Truth podcast, brought to you by yours truly, Holler the Truth. Giving you the truth for the future, the present, and the past. But I gotta ask, can you handle it? What the fuck is up, guys? <laughs> Man, when I tell you it's been a journey to get here, um, you know, them internal trials and tribulations, bro. It took me a while to get to this point. I've been wanting to get here, been wanting to start this, and I'm a procrastinator, point blank, period. I don't know why. I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, but I'm getting in the motions of not procrastinating anymore. So let's get there first, right? Which starts here. I can't procrastinate anymore because we got to give y'all what we got to give y'all. But anyways, I'm Holla the Truth. I'm a Bay Area um, graphic designer, producer, artist. I'm like the one-stop shop here. You can come fucking get it. Whatever you need, it's right here. I can figure it out. And people that know me know that. Because this is where they come to get that shit. <laughs> uh, I was born in Denver, Colorado. Shout out to Denver, Colorado. It was a journey, man. You know, trying to learn how to be a man. Trying to figure some things out. I moved out to California when I was 18. Shout out to the Bay Area, San Francisco, to be more exact. I uh, got recruited for football. Shout out to Coach Terry. Like I said, if I get some chicken, Coach Terry, I'm coming to break you off, brother. Because without you, probably wouldn't be here. I have family out here and shit, but without that highlight tape that he sent to Coach Rush out of College of San Mateo, I probably wouldn't be here today. Um, I didn't play football, though. I ended up just going to school and shit uh, at the City College of San Mateo. I am mean, well, I started at the City College of San Mateo. And then later switched to the City College of San Francisco, where I didn't play football because they had their recruits and their team already. And the gray shirt idea just didn't sit well with me. I kind of felt like when I was an arrogant 18 year old, like I was just that nigga. I still kind of hold that. <laughs> yeah, I still kind of still kind of walk around with that on my shoulder. Like, yeah, but it's gotten better for the show. Um, my childhood was pretty spicy, you know, I had to, uh, try to navigate life without no real male role models, like, I really didn't look up to none of the people, none of the men that were around me, should I say? No discredit to them, it just wasn't, you know, a lot of them weren't who I saw myself as, um, you know, I grew up around drug dealers and gang members and, you know, so I'm like, the first person in my co in my family to go to college and get that degree like so i got two of them um we'll tap into that but yeah my father was murdered when i was four still unsolved we have yet to figure that out um just a bunch of speculation at this point but who gives a fuck it's been what 30 years now you know i don't think it's gonna serve me any purpose to know who the fuck did it so here we are with that but yeah, in uh, high school, like I said, I played football. I played lacrosse as well. And it was crazy because I was getting recruited for that. Uh, I only played one season and, you know, I touched varsity a little bit, but not too much. But there was a game where I shut down one of the top scorers in Colorado. I don't even remember his name. I just know they told me not to let him score. That boy didn't score until they told me to start switching on fast breaks. But that's another story. Anyways. My transition from uh, Denver to California was pretty smooth. I really didn't struggle like that. And, you know, I stayed in my place. I knew how to deal with people. I'm, I've always been a people person. Uh, I never really had real issues with niggas unless it was about a bitch. Of course. Uh, you know, a lot of these niggas really be in their feelings over these bitches. And then don't even be doing them right which is 
crazy to me. But, you know, I've always been this kind of like womanizer, toxic ass nigga, boyfriend number two, side nigga. You know, that was kind of my role. I had accepted for a long time. So I didn't really know how to be a boyfriend. You know, I always knew how to play number two because number two is the fun nigga. Like I said, I don't give a fuck about being the only nigga. Let me be the favorite nigga. You feel me? <laughs> Let me be the fucking favorite. But, yeah, so that's, you know, background a little bit about myself from, you know, Denver to California. Here I am 16 years later. I was only supposed to be out here for six weeks, but it turned into 16 years. I guess I enjoyed the atmosphere, the accessibility to the people that I needed to get to. I can't say that I, you know, accomplished what I wanted to accomplish musically. I do got, you know, some little hits out there. Most known is Semiato Cease Chose Up. Uh, multi-million views. I got multi-million views with Young T.O. And some other people that uh, we'll talk about later. You know, I have some people out here. I actually have some of those artists tap in with us and give you some of their story. My education, you know, I got two degrees, one from the City College of San Francisco for social and behavioral science and a degree in communications from San Francisco State University. Shout out Gators. Yiddick. But um, I never really utilized my degrees in any fashion uh, work-wise. I have used them to manipulate women. You know, they get this facade that oh he has degrees he's smart he's educated he's gonna do something and da 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 you know I didn't necessarily utilize them how I should have just as a manipulation tactic and you know the communication degree helped with that too um communication was easy for me because it was a bunch of speech classes and understanding people and I've gotten to a place in life where I'm able to understand people and talk to people. People say that I am a little bit toxic in my vernacular, though. I do get to saying some spicy shit sometimes. But I really just be wanting people to dig deeper into their thoughts. Like, a lot of people like to stay on the surface and give these surface-level opinions about people, things, and whatnot. And I really ask people to dig deeper. Like, try to figure out what it is, why it is, and... Uh, really understand what you're saying to me. Like you can't just say anything to me. I'm gonna challenge it. If it doesn't, re if it doesn't align with what I got going on in my mental, I'm gonna challenge it. And it's not always a negative thing, and people always take it like that. And I really despise that because I want you to understand what you're saying, and you know, dig deeper, just a little bit deeper. You know, trauma is there. You gotta dig deep to heal that shit. You know, get you a shovel and. Dig a little deeper. That's all I'll be looking for. Not to be toxic. But yeah, my interest, you know, I, like I said, I did music. I still do music. I want to tap back into that a little bit more. But yeah, I fuck with the music. I'm a producer, a uh, rap artist, I guess you can say. I got some songs with some good people. Hopefully I can get them, to, you know, come interview one day. But uh i think i've lost that interest for music the enthusiasm really because you know you don't get the results you necessarily looking for it kind of takes away from it and you know the discipline I, we'll get into discipline uh i also bowl a lot of people know me from bowling you know uh i give off this nigga vibe but i can bowl my ass off and it looks a little, it, it doesn't look real professional, but I do what I need to do when I need to do it. Best believe. And for some reason, I'm always the nigga on the team that people want to bet. And my bowling partners just kind of laugh like, yeah, he ain't the nigga to bet, bro. Speaking of which, Tusi, my nigga, you said you was coming to fuck with us on TikTok, bruh. You jumped in our live talking that shit like you was that nigga. Come fuck with us. You had your tour, you came out here, all the shit. Nigga ain't come fuck with us. So, yeah, I'm calling you out now. So, if y'all see this and y'all know Tusi, tell him to tap in. We got some bowling shit to figure out. And some music shit. You know, I want to work with some people. 
maybe we can figure out something there too. But other interests, women. I fucking love women, bro. I uh I like overindulge in it and still can't get enough. Like and I guess that's what's pushed me to be this womanizing ass toxic nigga because I just love women, you know? I love pussy. I love flirting. I love making women smile. Like I just love the figure of a woman. You the, ooh, you just see them body sometime and it just takes you to a whole nother place in your head. But I have gotten more disciplined. You know, I flirt a lot. I'm gonna flirt. That's what I do. Uh, hasn't necessarily served me per- served me justice in relationships, but you know, that's who I am. I'm a fucking flirt. R. Kelly, Usher, I'm a flirt. (laughs) But yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm tapping in with that idea. And like I said, I want to dig deeper. Like, I don't want it to just be on the surface level of, oh, you like women and you just do this, that, and the third. No, I want to know why. I'm still trying to figure out why. Um, It's going to take some time. It's going to take some digging deep to figure this out. But we're going to figure it out. Shout out to my therapist, you know. Black men in therapy, that's a thing. Uh, you know, I had a friend, he, he, he wasn't too proud to be in therapy. And I'm like, bro, you, you're young. Embrace that shit. Like, you're trying to do the process before you even know you need to do the process. You know, men don't really develop that sense of, you feel me, until it's a little later in life. But... You know, this nigga going to therapy, I definitely applaud him for that. And I had to let him know that that's a good thing, bro. Don't don't downplay the situation. Don't downplay yourself. Don't think you're any less of a man or any less of whatever you think because you're in therapy. Like, nigga, we need this shit, especially as a community. We need this shit. We need to fucking heal. We need to heal so we can learn to love each other and learn to love women and, you know, uh... Like, I'm tired of going places and niggas look at you like you the enemy. Nigga, I'm not your enemy. For all you know, nigga, we can run up a check together. But you looking at me like you want to kill me for no fucking reason. Like, I hate that shit. Niggas need to stop that shit. For real, for real. Um, My accomplishments in life. Music. Like I said, shout out to Semiato Seats, you know. Chose up. Young T.O. Um, me as an artist. I can't say I had the success that I was looking for with it, but I always told myself if I was making the, if I was making songs for the same 50 people, uh, that's what I would do because people that listen to my music know that it's authentic. It's real. It's the truth via holler the truth. Uh, I'm giving them that, you know, internal me that I'm, I'm able to express myself in a way that a lot of people can't. And a lot of people have reached out to me about that. I've made people cry for my music. Uh, I've made people happy for my music. I've kept relationships together for my music. But, you know, I didn't necessarily get the, the, I guess, the views and the notoriety for that, which is okay to me. You know, I was a bit insecure about my music anyways. I really don't like how my voice sounded. As a recording artist, I know I could have been a hell of a writer. I probably, I'm still can, you know. It's not like it's over, but that's where I was at with that. Um, it, it, I, I like to express my traumas through my music, and that's one thing I'm in getting in tune with right now. Like I said, shout out to my therapist, shout out to my job. They give us 25 free therapy sessions a year, which if you stretch it out over two weeks that'll last the whole year and my therapist is dope she's actually encouraged this idea because i've been talking about it for a while she brought up how uh the shay shay and cat williams interview kind of triggered her to think about me because it's like one fucking interview can change the whole trajectory of what you got going on in life You know, it could change the whole idea that people have of you. It could change your financial situation. A lot can change with just one thing. Like, fuck just an interview. Just an idea. One idea can change a whole lot for you. And we need to act on those ideas. 
I'm a little salty that it took me so long to get to this point because I was here. I was here for it. And I just, you know, wouldn't do it for some fucking reason. But like they said, the best version of you is on the other side of discipline. So that's what we're working on. That was my 2024 word of the year. Discipline. We're going to be fucking disciplined this year. So that being said, I stopped smoking. I said I'm going to go the whole year without smoking, which hasn't really been a problem. I'm pretty good with not smoking when I don't want to smoke. And masturbating. I am a chronic masturbator, which is crazy to say. Look at me. Like, what the fuck do I need to masturbate for? But, like I said, I'm a chronic masturbator. And, you know, that's one of the things that has to chill out this year. So, no weed and no fucking masturbating this year. Marijuana and masturbating. The m M&M. <laughs> That's where I'm at with that. In present day, like I said, I'm in therapy. I'm learning about myself. I'm trying to figure out the whys. You know, I do a lot of shit. We do a lot of shit in general, and we never really ask why. We never really tap into the idea of why the fuck we do what we do or think what we think is okay and how we run around hurting people because we don't really know these answers. And a lot of us don't really know ourselves. Like, I'm learning to love myself i really didn't learn how to love properly until i became a father you know and i still struggle with that but therapy is working through that we're gonna get there black man in therapy you know i've said therapy a few times we'll count it but i encourage niggas to go to therapy women men like go to therapy learn some shit who knows maybe it won't help you but it's probably because you don't do the work. Because therapy only works if you do the work, you know? And that's what we need to figure out. How to do the work. A lot of us stick with this idea that we can get what we want without putting the fucking work in. And that's not the idea. You have to put the work in. And there's a lot of people that don't want to get better. And that's cool, you know? You're entitled to your own shit. It's your life. My love life... I'm a single man. Uh, I've had some real toxic relationship history. Like I said, I'm a womanizer. I'm a toxic nigga. Not purposely, I would say, but subconsciously it's in there for me to just kind of do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do it. It hasn't served me any justice at this point. I mean, that's why I'm single. But I was, you know, dealing with pretty toxic relationships for 12 years uh my son's mom and my ex uh yeah me and my son's mom are great now we on really good terms but that ex nah man it's some it's some trauma from that shit right there boy i tell you we'll tap into that because that's some story that's some story being a dad you know i love being a dad I'm still trying to figure out how to be a man, though, and in the same motion, trying to teach my son how to do the same. Dad life is great, though. I love it. Um, he keeps me going, you know. I told his mom, like, she saved my life, but he saved my life because if it wasn't for him at certain times, you know, certain atmospheres, certain places, certain environments, it could have got spicy for whatever reasons. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to manage through those situations the best I could. And I'm still here to do what I set out to do, which is this, like we all have a purpose and given that I'm a very social person, I feel like I found my purpose. So this is my vulnerable moment, letting you guys into my fucking purpose. Let me live that. My bowling life, like I said, it's up. I'm gonna go to Vegas in a couple weeks, go turn up, try to give me some chicken out there, bring the team to some victory. You know, we got a little redemption to do because we sucked last year. We bowled like shit. I bowled like shit, just in general. But we getting that shit together. I'm a different bowler this year. I'm here for it. Uh, I figured some things out mechanically. Still not quite where I want to be because I still haven't got a fucking 300. 299, 298. Irritating as fuck. I'm a choke artist when it comes to that. 
get to the last ball and do some weird shit. But, yeah, that's where we're at with that. As far as music, like I said, I want to tap back into that. Uh... It's it's been a journey with this music shit, trials and tribulations, you know, just trying to figure this shit out on your own, doing everything on your own ain't always the best way, you know, everybody want to have that come up story like I did this shit myself, nobody helped me, blah, 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 everybody got help, like Janet Jackson said in Poetic Justice, nobody but nobody can make it out here alone, and the moment people start realizing that, the better off we may be, and the more we may soar, the higher we may go. Um, as far as this podcast, like I said, I'm here because this is what I do. I struggle with the idea of it because I was the nigga wondering what niggas was about to do when we realized this music shit wasn't really going to get us to where we was trying to get to. Uh, I always wondered what the next thing was going to be with people. Like, you know, is niggas going to force the music on their kids is... Like, what is the next step for niggas? And I, I noticed it's podcast. But shout out to my therapist and shout out to Million Dollars Worth of Game because they gave me a million dollars worth of game. Hopefully I can turn it into that. But my therapist, you know, she said when I had these negative thoughts about starting a podcast, she said, you got to walk in a room like you're the only nigga in there. She didn't say that specifically, but. You got to walk in the room like you're the only nigga in there. Like you, if this is your purpose, it's going to be your purpose. And you're going to fulfill that regardless of it being an oversaturated market, if that's how you want to look at it. But like somebody said at work last night, you know, it's 12 different brands of bread on the shelf. Uh, they all obviously multi-millionaires. So it's room for everybody, which brings me to Wallow. Uh, I forgot who they were interviewing, but he said some very interesting shit. He said, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, do it. And it was that simple for me. Uh, That little, you know, do it moment was all I really needed to really get in the, get in the, get, get my foot in the water, you know, get my feet wet, should I say. Uh, He had a really good idea that, um, you know, just jump out there. Get you a camera, get you a microphone, and do what you need to do to get where you're going. Um, So I took heed to that, and as you see, here we are, the first fucking episode. Took a long time, but we got here, and that was the most important part, is that we got here. So stop giving yourself excuses, you know? Do what the fuck you're supposed to be doing. Again, tapped into my quote, um, the best version of you is on the other side of discipline, um, I'm going to keep egging that on because, yeah, like if, you, if you're if you disciplined, you're going to see the results. Just like working out, eating better, you're going to see the results. If you're driving and you're trying to learn how to drive or you're trying to learn how to play basketball, all of that shit comes with discipline and work. I tell my son, man, nothing great comes easy, bro. He He likes to do this. Taking the easy way out, playing Madden on easy just because he know he can win. Nah, go to all pro now. You the mastered easy. Go to all pro, bro. So we can get up there. Maybe you can start playing on all Madden and I can get in your ass. Pause. But, like I said, uh, that's where we're at. My whole idea of the podcast, you know, it's a truth platform for storytelling. I want people to be able to come here and give their true story their background their history their why they're here that's what i'm looking for with people uh dig a little deeper you know i got some in-depth questions i can ask people to just kind of you know get under that surface give us the real truth the real you the real story of who the fuck you are like i'm doing this is holla the truth man i'm giving you the real story of holla the fucking truth and that's where we're going with that For the future, you know, the goals, the goal of the podcast, man, is to entertain. I want to entertain. The very first goal, though, a thousand subscribers. That's what we're looking for. A thousand subscribers. We need to get to that threshold. That is the main goal for right now. A thousand subscribers. A thousand subscribers. A thousand subscribers. Nah, but that's what we're trying to get to, you know. So tell a friend to tell a friend and tell a friend. Maybe you found this interesting. Maybe you didn't. 
But I know eventually you gonna want to be here for this shit. I'm telling you that now. Um, and shout out to the people that are here for this shit. I ain't gonna hold you. I released the reel uh, of the intro, that intro video y'all just seen. I released the reel for it and it went up. Like they were in the comments going crazy. The likes were going crazy. The DMs of people wanting to be ho be guests is crazy. So I love the uh, feedback from it. I love that people are interested and engaged in this shit and they want to be a part of this shit. I appreciate that so much more than y'all think I do or more than y'all would know that I do. Um, but like I said, my goals and shit are first a thousand subscribers and to entertain. That's what I do. I'm a fucking entertainer. Like. Pay attention. Um, hopes. You know, I just hope that something on here can change somebody's life, change somebody's perspective, give somebody that ugh, that they was looking for in life and help them, you know, help themselves. Because that's what we all need. We need a way to help ourselves. We be in our own fucking way and don't even know it sometimes. And we have to get out of that. We have to get out of that. Being in your own fucking way is very detrimental to your success and future. Um, my vision board, you know, I got some good shit on my vision board, which I'm still trying to, like I said, figure out the whys. I put a bunch of shit on my vision board, material shit like houses and cars and bank accounts, with money. Um, the money idea is just, you know, to buy time, like buy time with my son, buy time with, for myself, buy time to vacate, go see the world. Like I, I'm pretty well traveled for the most part but i need to go see some more shit like it's some shit out there that i ain't seen i still want to go to africa haven't been there so we'll get there one day um i had pictures of gilly and wallow a uh, million dollars worth of game the breakfast club one day i do want to be sitting right there with these niggas having these same conversations uh hopefully it's not for some backlash or some stupid shit i said or something but because I got a little mouth on me sometimes. But, you know, that's one of the goals is to get there, uh, sit on their platform. Hopefully have them sitting on my platform one day. Who knows? Maybe. Um, and my healing process, you know, I feel like this is a safe space for people to learn to heal. People to get healed. I don't think we ever get to a place where we're just completely healed. But we can get to a place of understanding what needs to heal and how to heal and how to control those ideas when they come for us to heal. You know, we, we all trying to get to a certain place in life and it's up to you to get there. You know, you, you can get the game, but you have to hold your own controller. Like you have to play the fucking game, how the game is to be played period point blank. If you don't, you can be that broke motherfucker talking about I stayed true. Shout out to J. Cole. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I'm going to try to get into every episode is asking people a hard truth about them. What is one hard truth that people have accepted about you? My hard truth is that people won't accept the fact that I'm not the person that they met originally. You know, you may have met me two years ago. I'm a different person. You may have met me four years ago. I'm a different person. And people need to accept that. I mean, they don't have to accept that, but they need to understand that I'm not that person anymore. And if you're going to hold me to that idea, then you don't really need to be around me, you know? Like, we got to get people from around us that don't accept the who we are now. But, you know, that's it for this episode. Like I said, I'm Holla the Truth. This is my background. This is the Holla the Truth podcast, giving you the truth for the future, the present, and the past. But I gotta ask, can you handle it? <laughs>